Today we're going to talk about windmills, we're going to talk about power production, we're going to talk about getting this thing running. How many of us have done this? We've set up our health hammer, we've got our power, we see wind going, we engage, and we're thinking, oh man, let's go. What's happening? Do I need to break this and reattach it? Nope, that's jamming it up. What's happening? Well, today we're going to talk about it and see if we might be able to come up with some solutions, all right? And then I'm going to show you the design I came up with in my own survival world that's going to allow me to use to have three health hammers going off of one power line, okay? So here we go. Let's talk about windmills. Let's talk about power. <laughs> All right, I'm willing to make a bet right here and right now that if you've been playing Vintage Story for a while and you use YouTube to look at videos, I guarantee you've done a search on YouTube videos talking about windmills and Vintage Story. And you've come across this picture from one of our friends on the game server. This is the gearbox that's been set up. And I'll link at the back end of this video or in the description, I'll put a link to that video. But this is the gearbox assembly that was built uh, by one of our Vintage Story friends. And it basically shows how can you change gears in Vintage Story from low speed to high speed to straight transfer of power. And that's what this gearbox does. By connecting the different gears at different points, it allows you to either increase the speed, decrease the speed, or use just the straight power that's provided by it. So if we look at the comparison, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at what happens to this gear in comparison to this gear with each one of these moves. So if we wanted to just use a straight transfer of power, we would engage this switch right here and we would get a one-to-one -one transfer between that one and that one. So every time that gear goes around one time, that gear is going to go around one time. Okay? Just straight transfer of power. Nothing special. But let's say we wanted to gear it down. We wanted to put it into first gear. Then we would engage this switch. And what you'll see happen is that now this gear will move five times slower than this gear moves. It's a five-time reduction on the speed of it. But if we wanted to make everything go faster, then we'd jump it into high gear. And that's what's going to happen here. And look at that. Look at what we've done there. Okay? And the reason we're doing this is because there's a difference between the number of spokes and the number of teeth on each one of these gears. An angled gear has eight teeth on it. The large gear has 44. So that means if these are connected to each other, like this is right here then every time this gear goes around one time this gear has to go around five times 44 teeth have to travel around this way since there's eight in this one it has to rotate five times to keep up so as you see here I've got power coming down this line every time the rotor spins up there it's moving this gear around one time but since this has eight teeth on it, it has to move five times. Which means that as that one comes straight across, it's moving this top one five times. So every time this gear goes around one time, this one's going around five times. As it's, it, it's on the center of the large gear, that means each one of these teeth are going around five times. But what do we have here? We have another angled gear. And we already said that every time this goes around one time, that is going to go around five times. So that is moving 25 times faster than that. That is moving five times faster than that. That's moving 25 times faster than that. Hello, chicken. Can I get you? Yeah, I got you. So with that difference in speed coming across, when we engage, we should get a pretty good increase in our output. Now this is determined by torque. We've got to make sure we're not losing our torque when we're doing this, okay? So if speed starts to decrease even just a little bit up there, we're going to start losing our torque. And we 
may not be able to keep up this speed going. So we have to decrease the amount of torque we have, or we have to increase the amount of torque we have, or we have to reduce the resistance on the axle to turn. So that's what I've done up here. So let's do a little bit of a demonstration here. I'm going to take and turn these three off. So now these three are not connected. I've used the transmission and the clutch to disengage the transfer of power from that windmill through these axles to this gear right here. They're not connected anymore. Okay, same thing on that one, same thing on that one. So all of this is taking place based on this one. This goes around one time, causes this shaft to turn around one time, causes this gear to turn around one time, etc., etc. You get the point, right? So now we bring this all the way down here, and we're saying we have now 25 time increase come into this gear right here, but we we don't have as much resistance in this line to move. So what happens? Ugh! <laughs> Yeah, it's all happened to us all. Don't deny it. It's happened to us all. And we're always going, what? What's going on? Why don't I have any power? Well, it's because you're focusing too much on the speed coming down through there and you're not focusing on the resistance or on the torque. So you want to increase your speed on your windmill? Decrease your resistance levels by adding additional powers. So each one of these, not really increasing the speed at which this is rate and moving, right? We saw that, one to one. But what it's doing is it's decreasing the resistance to this thing to move. So it's allowing the torque to transfer farther down through the line. So another way to visualize the interaction that you have between your gears, between uh, the, the angled gears and the large gear, and also to see how it impacts where you attach that angled gear to on your large gear. I built this contraption and this is just simply it has a it has a power system up here, it has a power system over here. The angled gear attaches to the side of the large gear here. The angled gear attaches to the center of the large gear here. So when I increase this, when I engage this clutch you're going to see it's going to increase the speed at which this thing rotates. You see that? So that's going to make it spin faster. But if I do this one, you're going to see it's not going to spin as fast, but we're increasing torque. So if I were to come down here and... You can see that that's having an effect. If I turn this thing off and I go here, nothing okay the power generated by our windmill here which as you see is at a hundred kn with a wind speed of 92 to 102 percent is just not enough power to move this and even if i were to come in here and break this and put it back it's going to gum up because the resistance level is too high but if i come down here and I engage this one, you can see that's enough to engage my health hammer. So with the resistance I was talking about, having additional rotors and chaining them together is one of the better ways to decreasing the resistance so that you can increase your speed and increase your torque. So when I was trying to answer the question of what would be the best for my build, how could I set this up in the best way possible? Make sure wind is blowing again. I came to the conclusion the best thing to do would probably be a combination so that I have windmills that are turning the center rotor, so I'm decreasing the resistance, and then that same kind of design having one right at the center to provide power all the way down the line. And then when I got down to the bottom, instead of using the standard gearbox, you see what I've got is a one to turn this thing five times. So I've got the straight torque coming in down this main line 
and I got the speed increase right at the health hammer itself instead of further down the line. This seemed to work out best for me and it seems to make the smallest design possible. So this is what I've used in my world so that I can operate three health hammers at once. So I hope that's helpful for you. This has been a, a very hard episode for me to make. Um, it's one of those where whenever you're making it, sometimes the wind is working, sometimes it's not. And so I've had to record this over several days and several sessions to try to get what I wanted out of this. So hopefully you gain something from this. Get yourself into a creative world. Try out different designs, link stuff together, and come up with some Frankenstein designs that just don't work. And eventually you'll find ones that do. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. This is Shido, and we'll see you next time. Take care.